Welcome back to the shed. Take five. Welcome back to the shed. So this project all started from a video I saw online of a model watchmaker's lathe being driven by a small oscillating engine. And I just loved the styling of the lathe and the simplicity of the model setup. So I decided it would be a good next project to make a similar model of a lathe to be run by one of my wigwag engines. Now I am used to working without plans and drawings as the majority of my products are built from bar stock metal. But I do sometimes make models which come with a set of castings and plans, but often find the need to modify them either to suit my tooling or my measurement system, such as using metric instead of imperial. Or I may modify an aspect of the design if I feel that there is a better or easier way of doing something. But with this little model lathe, it was always going to be scratch build. And all I had to go on was a very short video and a still image that I had printed out from a screenshot of the video to have in the workshop for reference. I started with making the lathe bed from a length of one inch aluminium round stock which looked to be about the right size and scale for the photo. And I based all my data metrics from this stock size to build the rest of the lathe. So a length of this was sawn off at about seven and a half inches long. Now ideally this needed a T-shaped slot cutting down the length but I didn't have any T-slot cutters this small. So I opted to use my 60 degree 12 mm dovetail slot cutter which I already owned from a previous job and formed the slot in the lathe bed on my milling machine. This dovetail slot will allow the connection of the headstock, tailstock and the carriage by using a matching dovetail, whilst allowing the tailstock and carriage to be able to slide along the bedways. Now I started off videoing some of the machining operations, but as the build progressed I simply got too involved with the process that filming everything was going to become a bit of a distraction so I didn't detail much of the rest of the build on video. Also, as I was building on the fly, as it were, my design ideas would often deviate part way through the build. And this type of make it up as you go along style of working would have made for a very, very confusing video as I hopped from one idea to the next. So I apologize for the lack of machining footage. So instead of this, I'll jump straight to the finished model on the bench and I'll break down the different parts of the model in further detail as the video progresses. It's often the case that viewers only watch a short percentage of my YouTube videos anyway, so if you are interested in the individual parts that make up this model, keep watching. So here is the finished Wigwag Mini Lathe model. This has taken me about three months or so on and off in the workshop at evenings and weekends and has been a welcome distraction as I do often need some clear headspace away from it all and this little model has given me this. The headstock was made from a block of aluminium which was bored out on the lathe for the bearings and then metal removed on the mill until I was happy with the overall shape. The rounded over top was created using the rotary table on the door Westbury milling machine and the sides then tapered to give a pleasing shape. Bronze bearings were then turned to suit the 6mm drive shaft and these were fitted to the headstock. The tailstock body was also milled and a turret section was attached using metal adhesive. The turret was reamed to accept an 8mm barrel which is part threaded to a quarter inch by 40 threads per inch to allow the barrel to be advanced and retracted via a small brass handwheel. 
At the front of the barrel, there is a six millimeter reamed hole to accept, in this case, a fixed center for turning between centers. The tailstock is attached to the lathe bed via a dovetail, which can be set in position on the bed using this thumb wheel, which tightens the dovetail. The carriage section was milled out to create an L shape, with the base protrusion to align in the bedway, and again a dovetail was used as a fixed guide, allowing it to slide along for positioning. There is a small carriage lock on the back to fix its position on the bed. The upper dovetail and M3 threaded lead screw hole allows the top slide, which has a milled dovetail slot on the underside, to slide onto the carriage dovetail. A small brass front plate allows the provision of the lead screw to move the top slide forwards and backwards with the use of another small hand wheel. The three T-slots on the top slide are simply 2mm straight slots as I don't have a cutter in those tiny dimensions so this is for visual detail only. The compound slide and the tall post are fixed to the top slide with an M3 thread and it can be set to an offset angle as required. Now the top slide is non-functional and the hand wheel just rotates freely as machining a functioning lead screw and dovetail system for this was just too tiny for my patience, not to mention my eyesight. But it was carefully shaped to reflect the elegant styling of the Myford ML7 compound. The tool post is a slotted four-way tool holder with a small piece of high-speed steel as a cutting tool. Again, just for visual detail and not intended to actually cut any material. The front apron of the saddle houses the carriage hand wheel and what would be a half-nut engagement lever for the saddle lead screw. Again, these are non-functional detail for the same reasons explained previously but add a nice touch of detail for the model. The actual lead screw is simply an off-the-shelf length of M4 threaded stainless steel bar, which screws through a threaded section on the front of the carriage section. This allows the carriage to be wound forwards and backwards along the lathe bed using the carriage screw hand wheel at the tailstock end of the lathe. The headstock mandrel is simply a length of 6mm stainless round bar, which has had a 60 degree centre turned into it. A brass faceplate was turned on the lathe from 40mm stock, and this was then grooved for effect, and four 3mm slots were milled into the face to allow for work holding. On the rear of the headstock is a set of gears, which were recycled from a planetary gearbox out of an old broken battery drill. I don't have any convolute gear cutters below module 1, so these seem to me to be like a good size and is in proportion for the model lathe. Unfortunately the gears were too wide for my liking originally, and they were also hardened, so to enable me to thin them out on the lathe, I heated them in my log burner for several hours at red hot and then allowed them to cool in the fire overnight. And this softened them somewhat, allowing me to mount and turn them in the lathe. Although they were still pretty tough to turn, it worked out quite well. I also made a small brass banjo to mount the gears on, as would be seen on a regular lathe. The gears, like much else on the lathe, are purely for visual appeal and don't actually connect to or drive the lead screw, but I just thought it would be a nice addition to the detail of the model. To drive the lathe, two identical pulleys were turned to allow a three-speed drive mechanism for the lathe. One is mounted on the lathe headstock, and then a sort of line shaft arrangement was built to sit at the rear of the lathe with the other pulley fixed to the shaft. A brass flywheel, which I had originally made for the horizontal wigwag engine, was repurposed here to give some extra kinetic momentum for the line shaft, and this was mounted next to the pulley. 
This is driven by a 2 to 1 ratio second pulley system driven directly from an extended axle from my original vertical wigwag engine. This seems to give a nice slow rotation of the lathe machine at moderate speeds of the engine. Again, trying to keep any motion in proportion for a little model. The bearings in the headstock, being made of bronze, require regular lubrication. And this is supplied to the machine via these little tiny brass oil cups, which were made from some quarter inch brass hex stock. The line shaft supports were also fitted with oil cups, although not actually required, as I used needle roller bearings for these axles due to the fact that they are individually mounted directly to a wooden base. So these type of bearings are far more forgiving than the reamed bronze if there is a slight misalignment error. I added a few embellishments in the form of these lovely little brass levers. One to engage the lead screw to the change wheel drive and one to the saddle to operate the half nuts and also one on the tailstock as a lever lock, all of which are for visual effect only, as they do not have any actual function, but look nice as a nice addition to the detail on the lathe. These little levers were simply made with a graver tool and freehand turned on the Myford lathe. So the lathe is now all set for some between centres turning. So what better than a nice engine crankshaft to be mounted on the lathe as a sort of work in progress. I made a small lathe dog to connect the crankshaft to the faceplate and this I think adds a final finishing touch to the model lathe. Well, I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video of my latest little creation. I've really enjoyed making this little model lathe and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. So I may add some further accessories later, possibly a little three jaw scroll chuck or at least something that resembles one. So yeah, thanks to Brad Smith for the inspiring video that led to this build and thanks to all the followers out there who like and comment on my videos. It really is appreciated. Now, if you like what I create, you can now help support my channel by buying me a coffee at coffee.com. I'll add the link to the description below. Oh, and I like it with milk and sugar, if that's okay. So that just about wraps this up for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.